Good morning, one and all. It's my pleasure and privilege to welcome you all to the today's webinar on a fairly advanced theme as a rapid prototyping in medical rehabilitation. The theme under discussion is much relevant to our profession with emerging need to update the profession with uh, technologies involved in the services of the profession. I am sure the webinar will go a long way in updating our knowledge as per need of the day. And I welcome with a sense of gratitude to him, Dr. Ken Rosen Bisley, the director of CRCK Kojikot Kerala, and a multifaceted scholarly personality. This moment becomes a special with an opportunity to welcome a resource person for the webinar among us, Dr. Heman Chauhan, an alumnus of IIT Delhi and a reputed researcher. His research areas and activities interfacing with uh, defense and healthcare, particularly for his development of three and five finger uh, prosthetic arm. I welcome the mainstream person participants belonging to different areas of concern, like uh, healthcare professionals, different kinds of healthcare professionals, and much hopefully they will be benefited by the webinar. Will also mutually each other, and more so their institution in terms of improved knowledge and a skill in the field of their service. Last but not the least, my welcome to Mr. Jitin. Um, who has always been more than willing and ready to assist and help in organizing this kind of event by the way of expertise in his handling electronic gadgets. So, uh, dear participants, uh, 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 now I would like to over the uh, session to our uh, Honorable Director to virtually inaugurate the session and Later on, we will uh, uh, proceed the program. Please help me. Dear uh, friends and colleagues, a uh, warm welcome to one and all of you. Uh, at the outset, I wish to appreciate and congratulate Shakshay Kumar or Piendo for taking initiative to conduct such a national level uh, webinar on a very interesting and a very relevant topic. And we are fortunate enough to have Dr. Hemant Chauhan, one of the stalwarts in this field. Especially, uh, this is an interface uh, between uh, the rehabilitation field as well as the science and technology field. And a reputed alumnus of IIT Delhi doing your man service in the field, uh, Dr. Hemant Chauhan. So we are so happy and glad we are having him as a resource person. And further, uh, this COVID, the, this uh, unprecedented scenario of this COVID pandemic is also giving us a lot of opportunities. Maybe we might not have thought of such a, a webinar had there not been a COVID pandemic like this. So this is, these are opportunities as well. And I don't wish to extend my talk any further because these are some other things which I personally feel we should uh, do away with because uh, the inaugural, inaugural session of uh, seminars and all are an integral part of yesteryears, I think, in this COVID era. I don't think these sort of uh, rituals are relevant. So any, uh, I'm not prolonging my talk any further. And I most respectfully welcome Dr. Hemant Chauhan for the session. Over to you, sir. Thank you, sir. I express my sincere thanks to you for uh, personally uh, inviting the session. And uh, now we'll uh, go ahead with our uh, resource person, uh, Dr. Heman Chauhan. And before that, I would like to give you all a uh, brief uh, intro of him. Dr. Chauhan past, uh, possesses a combined industry teaching and research experience of over 19 years. He has ventured multidisciplinary disciplinary research in areas of polymer and composite to embedded systems for low cost automation. Based on his research, he has five seven patents 
He had supervised over 40 masters and bachelor thesis in a uh, various uh, kind of uh, materials, manufacturing and automation. He has published over 65 international and eight national journals and conference papers. And he, uh, currently he is working on development of lightweight bullet and blast proof materials for our army personnel. Uh, Dr. Chauhan has developed many applications based on automation and embedded systems ranging from numerically controlled machines to bullet velocity measurement system for single stage gas, then at Delhi. And automatic tank target unit used in war practice for our Indian Army. The unmanned, uh, uh, the unmanned wireless operated surveillance vehicle designed by designed and developed by Dr. Chauhan received numerous awards, including innovation award from the Chief Minister of Himachal Pradesh. His name appears in the Limca Book of Record 2011 for the development of unmanned vehicle. He has conducted many around 20 workshops on robotics and 3D printing, and he has delivered uh, guest lectures and many uh, universities and institutes. Dr. Chauhan also mentors the uh, startup based on automation and 3D, 3D printer manufacturing, which are, which are the outcome of bachelor's and master project guided by him. So again, I welcome you, sir, Dr. Chauhan, sir, and I request you to uh, please uh, go ahead with your topic. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Raksha. Thank you, Director, sir. Uh, thanks for the nice introduction. I welcome all the participants. I hope I am uh, loud and clear, audible to all. Uh, Dr. Raksha, please, could you please confirm? Okay, okay sir. We, you are audible to us. Okay, then without wasting any time any further, we'll come to the topic. Uh, uh, so today, in the next one plus hour, I think it's uh, I think I received one hour. I request others to please uh, stop sharing their mics, mute yourself. So uh, we'll be trying to see that how rapid prototyping can be beneficial to the medical fraternity, how doctors can be benefited or the entire uh, medical teams treating the patients can take the good advantage of the technological parts of what we think that these are closely related only to the engineering section. So we'll try to see that how these prototyping techniques can aid in a medical profession. So I'll take one of your simplest possible example. I request all of you to please adjust the screen in such a way that you can see the, the presentation more clearly. This I assume is your normal conventional process of designing a socket wherein uh, a patient who has been treated after amputation, this is what we are left with a residual limb. When you go for a negative cast, when you get a cast filled. So basically with this step, what you are getting for us, technically it's a mold. You've got the exact shape which has to be provided the socket. Then you make a final mold and then you finally go for a socket. This is what I assume is the process and this is what I learned. And in a general convention, it is expected that this entire process will take a week's time to reach one of these positions. Now, what are these positions basically? That either the amputee is above knee or below knee. So basis that. But this single process shows that how tedious the job it is. And how and we'll see by the end of this lecture that how technology can help us in better designing and making the things efficient. So we first take what is manufacturing. So depending on which segment of science or life we are into, it could be a process, it could be a method, or it could be an art. This particular thing in the previous slide, it's more of an art, but then it's a critical process as well, which results into a finished product. So this manufacturing could be what we call as either subtractive or additive. What do we mean by subtractive? In a traditional way, whatever manufacturing is being done, we start with whatever material it is, maybe a piece of wood or a plastic or a metal, something like this. So we try to carve it. Basically, we remove whatever is unwanted. And in the process of removal of the unwanted material, we generate a lot of waste. 
finally we come up with the desirable finished part now this could be a traditional way or it could be a modern way when we say modern we look for machines like computer numerically controlled machine so there the things are quite easier the quality and accuracy is are much higher but still the process more or less remains subtractive in nature that is we start with a starting material and we remove the unwanted the second type available to us is additive manufacturing and there comes into picture uh, it's a later stage of this only where we will see that what is rapid prototyping in additive manufacturing instead of removing the material what we do is like visible in this figure we generate the 3d slices of the material and we add those slices layer by layer so basically it's like slicing a piece of tomato so we have different different slices of tomatoes they are uh, cut and then initially they are cut and we try to join them to get the desired product now in this process we'll end up having the finished product and theoretically there is no waste practically there could be a bit of waste but theoretically we say that okay initially at the start of manufacturing we had nothing on the table then we started laying the material layer by layer so in the process of laying the material layer by layer we end up having the desired integrate part and since we are laying the material layer by layer so compared to cutting uh, subtractive kind of manufacturing the complexities of part that can be handled in case of additive manufacturing is much much higher now what is rapid prototyping rapid prototyping basically is a name of group of techniques which are used to quickly fabricate a scaled model of a part now here scale doesn't always mean that it has to be small only or large only it the scale could be 1 is to 1 it could be smaller the size if i have to make a airplane i'll make a 1 is to 100 or 1000 i'll make a smaller one but if i am making a, let's say a human body part artery or some part of a eye or bone maybe i would like to have 10 times bigger part so scaling is possible at every uh, possible stage so we basically deal with group of techniques which are used to fabricate the desired shape by using one of the technique of rp and for that we will require the knowledge of three dimensional computer aided design or the cad data commonly known as uh, it's just a glimpse he is the father of the rapid prototyping technique professor charles w hull uh, he got his first patent in 1986 and he owns a company in the name of 3d systems and he is alive he i guess he is in 80s and he is patent fine and still developing numerous products for the mankind is just for the history part of it that we are dealing with a technology wherein the inventor of the technology is still alive now what are the key characteristics of uh, this rapid prototyping now so basically a technology that will produce model and prototype parts from 3d cad data we'll very soon get what do we mean by 3d cad data for you at least the computerized tomographic data or mri data or x ray uh, digital x ray data three dimensional x ray data uh, any screen a scheme from where we can get the digital three dimensional model of the part we are interested in is what we are looking for so for engineers it is 3d cad data for a medical professional at least ct and mri are the most uh, commonly known stuff then we look for rp systems to join now what can be joined by which material we can have uh, these uh, additive manufacturing parts so your starting material could be a liquid a powder or a sheet material so we'll see few of them in the upcoming slides now we also call it as layer by layer manufacturing or rp machines fabricate these are few of the material options we normally look for and in general in the literature you will find layered manufacturing solid free foam fabrication rapid prototyping 3d printing these are all Uh, different different synonyms of what we call as rapid prototyping 
what what will be the key terms of relevance to us 3d modeling or the computer aided design modeling it is basically a design philosophy which allows engineers designers those who are interested in making the 3d model of the part of interest to build the realistic computer models or assemblies like a car is a complete assembly of system whereas one of the component i see it's a single component and then these models can be printed or these models can be cut on what we call as the cnc machine so 3d cad model or cad model second term of uh, repeatedly used will be stl that is a standard tessellation language it is basically a file format the way we save a dot doc file or a excel file it's also a file format which is basically uh, the start point of any type of rapid prototyping technique now we should first know what is a skinning how a engineer or how we'll get this digital data if it is not ct or mri or a digital x ray then engineers normally look for a scanner what is a 3d scanner it basically is a process of analyzing a real world object or environment to collect the data in terms of its shape or appearance and this data can be used to construct so for this there is something wrong with the repeatedly zoom up here so this mouse doesn't work the 3d scanners can be based on many different technologies and each technology has its own advantages and disadvantages and the most important term is cost so at very very this point i would like to tell you that uh, being medical professional you may look after that uh, we are looking for a scanner so scanners typically start somewhere around just below 50000 rupees and then you can go up to crore depending on you are going to scan a, a pen pencil or a airplane so with this video here we see that how 3d scanning is done so basically what do we mean by 3d scanning that we have a part and we are holding a camera but this camera is not a general purpose camera it has got some peculiar features that whatever picture it is taking it is simultaneously being processed and here you can see on the this left section of this video screen that the replica of this physical body part is being created in the computer inside the computer so basically we are going to develop what we call as the 3d cad data or the 3d cad model and this process of using a set of cameras or a set of technology to scan a body part is called as 3d scanning so here you can we can see that this entire leg is being digitally created though it looks very fast it will take 10 to 15 minutes time or maybe more than that depending on the size of part so here we see that okay the entire human leg has been scanned and with a couple of stitches and filtering the noisy part data we finally have what we were looking for just like that you can also scan the other leg so here the uh, the intention of this particular step was to finally design the artificial leg so that z value of two legs was different so uh, that was the main concept that uh, okay i'll jump here and once the process is done both the legs can be joined so that the artificial limb can be adjusted at for the final requirement or the actual body eye height of the human now this entire system is in is done in a computer graphics world we were discussing in the very first slide how to make this socket even if you make this socket by this kind of a process we have generated only cad model of it so let's say here we have also scanned the other leg which is an amputated one so we have the cad model though of this amputated leg and then there is another software there we are going to create a skin on this 
this you can consider this part is actually the scan data of the human lab and here we will define that what kind of skin we are looking for this new color being generated the uh, uh, pndo doctor is deciding that what should be the shape of my socket and then he will simply say that give this particular section a thickness 5 mm 10 mm depending on requirement so he is going to develop and then he will simply click one of the option that okay uh, he is generating the skin so now that part will be finalized with whatever radiuses has been defined and finally this part will get a thickness so here we got a thickness of this part then the next step is like that you want to have some pressure point you need to change minor adjustment in the dimension because uh, this as of now is a free body it it will easily move on this uh, amputated leg so they will apply whatever kind of pressure points are to be there whatever corner radiusing is is required so all the radiuses are being adjusted within the software and once this process is done then you look for the bottom part of it where you are to we are going to connect this socket to the rest of the leg so that segment is desired designed decided once done let's say that connecting part has been designed or joined to it now this entire uh, process of socket design in cad is completed it is entirely done using scanning the data rather than having the casting process uh, which is conventionally being followed and finally we'll remove the mold itself we have to simply make two clicks select the part delete it so what we are left with is the socket now this is the file sorry so now at this point we have a socket and now this particular file visible on a computer screen is actually 3d cad data which we have created over the scan data using some computer features and now we can take this file to a 3d printer so this part will be printed depending on shape and size of this part it will be printed in few hours sorry there is something wrong with it yeah so we were here i'll go by this mode that that thing stucks a lot so we are here i assume that this much section is clear that by scanning a human body part and generating a skin on that we can create whatever body part we are looking for or the socket now what are the basic steps of this process so the first thing required is a cad model that could be in the form of surface model or the solid model the leg we scanned was a solid part and the the socket we have created is a hollow cavity so we call it as a surface model a surface which has got a thickness of x millimeter maybe then the next thing is pre processes in the name of pre processes basically we convert this solid model into a dot stl stuff that is we try to slice it so you can consider slicing any vegetable so we have a solid part in the computer only we have some software we will cut it into numerous layers basically and then wherever required if there is a cantilever or some part is hanging then we need to provide artificial support so that while printing it should not fall down so we have got the features within the software to build supports we go for the slicing that is uh, finalization of the process and then we go to any of the printer so uh, a printing machine will basically at this stage you will take hours and hours this job could be done in few minutes depending on uh, the size of the part then filtering this data will take another few more minutes generating stl is just a minute job supports are generated by the software only slicing is done by one click only this is the process where actually the phenomenon is taking place so this may take few minutes to few hours or few days depending on what is the size of your part once done if we have given some extra unwanted parts let's say uh, the starting base or some additional kind of support then they needs to be removed 
if there is any kind of planning process or centering processes involved then you need to do it post curing what we call as maybe some materials require microwave for further strengthening or heating or similar processes and your part is completed so this is how uh, in three steps pre processing that is on computer actual building and followed by post processing if required and your job is over in textual manner if i say so we are looking for a cad model and i need to convert it into a stl format all on computer i need a, i am looking for a rp machine which is compatible with my cad model we are going to slice it and then we are going to make the model layer by layer how most of the process how they will go we will make one layer of the material will lower the table equal to the thickness of the layer and then we lay another layer and this process will continue till the entire finished product is created and then finally the model is extracted whatever is unwanted will be removed and if there is any kind of cleaning post curing we go for it so what are the most common uh, rp techniques rapid prototyping techniques stereo lithography it's the first of its kind with this rp came into existence it typically uses photopolymers they are basically liquid resins which on exposure with a particular wavelength of laser get solidified so that's why they are called as photopolymer next we have 3d printing these actually 3d pieces or 3d printers are typically similar to what you are having in your office in the name of uh, printers which print on the page they are spraying machines basically so they are technically 3d printers but what we call as a 3d printer they are actually something else they will come further but both the types of machines are available and since uh, these machines are relatively cheaper this fdm machines fuse deposition modeling what in general we call as 3d printing is actually fuse deposition modeling where we typically use thermoplastic it is one of the cheapest possible option and to start with even for medical applications it is the preferred piece if you are looking for full and final solution that some part is going to be integral to human body in vitro or in vivo whatever the case may be depending on material then sls is the best possible technique that is selective laser sintering then we do have 3d ceramic printings uh, they are used typically in a art kind of a work a laminated objects manufacturing they typically use something like glue so we'll cover few of these techniques for better understanding and then there are electron beam melting machines uh stereo lithography the first of its kind it is a process for creating 3d objects using a computer controlled laser to build the required structure and uh, we'll simply go to one video to get how the things work so here we can see that a person is working on the cad model of a part and finally this part will be sliced here only or we take the cad model from this point to the production location now our entire data is there in a thumb drive and this is my production machine that is a stereo lithography machine so we transfer the data we perform the slicing here you can see these lines are generated of a different color this is basically the base and inside we can see the similar color of lines they are actually the support whereas this main part is my what i am looking for as in finished part now this is the liquid resin which is photo curable so when we irradiate this particular resin with uv light or laser light it gets solidified now we have a table on to which the part will be created and we simply play the file the table goes down equal to the thickness of one layer and now we observe that there is a a laser light being irradiated so that particular section of that liquid polymer has solidified or cured and then this process will continue after laying one layer the table goes down equal to thickness of one layer and the phenomena keeps on so now we see that continuously this phenomena is occurring once one layer is completed the part will go down now here goes the table down a fresh layer of liquid is ensured of a uniform thickness and then we continue with this process sorry
so this process continues and my height keeps on growing finally a part is ready and it is just cured and this particular resin if it it requires some kind of uh, post curing then after removing the excess uh, this photopolymer the unwanted part will be removed now this is the unwanted the different colored part we remove whatever is unwanted the liquid is removed uh, washed with air and then we go for final curing inside a uv chamber so it is kept uh, as per a designated cycle inside the uv chamber and our finished product is ready so this is what we call as a stereolithography process a process wherein we have used a liquid photopolymer which can be cured by laser to get the desired finished product and this is how the process goes so you have seen in the video that this is the table and layer by layer we are lowering the table and there is a laser source which ensures that my phenomena is occurring as per the requirement so we have a monomer we have a initiator and the uv or the laser light it depends what kind of uh, photopolymer we are using finally we have what we call as the cured part uh, second one of the simplest possible process is laminated object manufacturing it is something which we can do at home that's why i am covering this particular one in a laminated object manufacturing what is done uh, this uh, the, the patent goes to uh, helices incorporation uh, basically we all have used stickers some point of time in our life so here we have a roll of paper which is basically something like a sticker paper and paper comes from wood so the final properties will be close to wood only so we lay from this side let's say the roll goes we have a hot roller this hot roller we move on this uh, piece of paper so that my glue gets activated then with the help of laser we will cut the paper it is like cutting a sticker the table goes down equal to the thickness of paper and then we continue with the phenomena and whatever is unwanted will be cross hatched so basically i am going to have let's say a circle i am going to have 10 mm circle of thousands of stickers and i am going to stick them together so finally i'll be having a three dimensional part otherwise i call that piece of paper as a 2d it's a plane it's not a a solid part but if i join thousands of such papers i will end up having a laminated object that is a rp technique it's not applicable in the medical field because the properties of this particular material are close to wood only and being a piece of paper uh, you wet it moisture and it it will get the edges will get distorted so it's not the preferred case but it's very good for learning that how things move then selective laser sintering is the most important one uh for this the patent goes to this uh, university of texas the biggest advantage of sls technique is selective laser sintering is that instead of using polymers only here we can also use what we call as metals so here we see that there is a plate form and the surface is full of powder now this powder is let's say titanium powder so with the help of this titanium powder and we have a laser laser has got one more property that in, it can instantly heat any material so we observe here on this side of the figure that when this laser falls over here so whatever part the laser has uh, heated up it will be selectively centered sintering basically refers to joining of the powdered parts due to heat so this particular section get heated and it will be welded together so this way we are creating a a part so for this also i have a now here in this case there is another machine what we do is we place the powder and the knife moves and there is a a thin layer of powder which could be metal or polymer or whatever material it is it should be curable at 
with the help of this particular given uh, uh, laser energy so we are going to create a part out of laser energy now in this particular video what we are watching is ceramic so again the same process goes on the entire thickness is generated and finally we can eject out our desired necessary part if required we can further go for sintering heating these materials will further add to the strength of the material so why this particular technique is important because this is the only well established technique with the help of which we can look for stainless steel or titanium parts the bio inert materials which can be readily placed inside the human body so sls is a very good option for uh, final placement of parts inside the human body then we come to the word what we it's the buzzword 3d printing commonly known as actually that is fdm fused deposition modeling in this what actually happens is that we have a spool of thermoplastic polymer visible over here so we push this spool through a extruder over here we heat this material so that it is semi molten and then we try to control the shape of movement of this particular table and these could be 1 2 3 as many number of nozzles as many we want so here we see it more closely that my table can move in two direction let's say x and y and my head is giving the liquid material only so uh, for ease of understanding we keep all three motions to this table so my table can move in x and y and my table can also go down in z but in this video we'll see that how it happens that my head is moving in x and y so you can see that the head is moving in x and y that is this particular red element okay it is moving in x and y and it is laying the material in the form of a thin fiber of polym uh, this uh, polymer uh, normally used are polylactic acid pla or abs the most common polymers so here we we observe that a layer is being laid then fan comes to cool this layer if it is a hot part or as per requirement so it is more of a uh a jalebi making or some kind of whatever uh, kitchen related stuff you can see that we are going to lay a material in a specific fashion and we have to precisely control this process of laying the material this is the most commonly used technique because of its cost as i was discussing last night with dr akshay as well so if you are looking for a 3d printer they could be as cheap as close to 50000 and as high as sls so 3 plus crore or 5 plus crore depending on our requirement what are the most common materials we can look for in these combinedly under the umbrella of uh, this rapid prototyping technique so this could be metals like aluminium copper steel or titanium the most preferred case these could be polymer so it is pp pla abs polyesters polystyrenes uh, these days carbon filled glass filled and aramid filled polymers are very much in demand because of their high strength uh, at least carbon filled or carbon based composites are i assume uh, known to doctors as well they are primarily used in aerospace industry for their high stiffness and lightweight other uh, ornamental stuffs are for sand ceramics elastomers chocolates even plasters tungsten and wax are for special purposes only in particular biocompatible material if we see these pcl ppt uh, tcps uh, hs tcps these are most uh, few of the most common polymethyl methacrylate grade so these are the most commonly preferred biocompatible materials for external uses only no internal ones only titanium or ss can go inside the human body uh, of these and they cannot be made on a, a 3d printer kind of a machine for these particular materials we have to look for techniques like selective laser sintering or ion beam based machines now if we have to conclude at one point that okay i know couple of rapid prototyping technique then 
what are the basic steps number 1 we are looking for a cad model where from this cad model will come you have two choices one you have a 3d scanner something like a camera a handheld camera or a stationed one so we are going to place the object in front of it and scan it so that we can have the cad model ready for that particular uh, body part second by using ct scan mri or any other kind of imaging data imaging technique we got the cad model third we created our own with the help of scale vernier whatever gauges you have you make a cad model out of it once this job is done if you are doing it manually it's a tedious task if you are using scanner kind of a thing or ct scan or mri it's very easy because you already have the digital data then we go for the tessellation part of it a job which is there for you on one click you have to just decide what should be the thickness of per layer a slicing software again one click phenomena which what it will do this triangulated part will be further divided into independent layers once this is done what type of printer you are having accordingly you have couple of more clicks so that this particular file is acceptable to this particular machine implement or just click print and there will appear a number 4 hours so you are free for next 4 hours because this printer will print its job at its own you are no we are required and finally after 4 hours what you will have is your finished part just remove it uh, from the tray and remove whatever is unwanted if there is a final curing cycle do go for it if not it's ready to use so what could be from this point we will slightly deviate from our pndo chapter and towards the end of the lecture we'll come back to that so what are the most common uh, in general purpose medical applications so in general we look for complex morphologies which may be better depicted on 3d solid model rather than a 2d printed kind of a maybe colored even but still we cannot visualize to the extent if we are given the actual part then uh, for training purposes we are using cadavers we can have the printed for in vivo or in vitro training kind of a thing we can look for these kind of uh, 3d printing how are they being used like in medical equipment i'll take a particular example uh, for this particular case that 3d printing can be very well used in case of a number of small medical related equipments this particular a uh, location hayati they have a lab called i hayati they are facing a problem uh, being a small nation they are inefficient and they have a corrupt import system which greatly increases the price of many goods so importing umbilical cord clamps is costly for this particular nation so they have come up with a or a, a group of this particular lab they have come up with a interesting solution that they go for a rapid prototyping of these umbilical uh, cord clamps they sterilize these clamps after manufacturing them and then these can be further re-sterilized or these plastics can be further recycled as well so here is the solution so they print it and uh, i assume the printing this particular component is less than 100 rupees in indian currency and once this part is printed it can readily be sterilized so a numerous set of problems are removed if you are having printer next to your desktop uh, likewise there are number of other things uh, i make the point clear at the very first slide of this particular uh, medical industry that the age of animal testing at the max we are not in the stage the sciences is not in a stage that we can permanently replace any of the human part but we are moving very fast so in this case you can see that how cornell people have developed a artificial ear the beauty of this ear is that it has got embedded electronics inside as well so you can have uh, if someone has lost the ear for whatever accident so a uh, artificial ear having the exact shape exact feel of the human body part and super human i mean super human hearing capabilities because of electronics they are feasible synthetic skin is something which is very much required because particularly in case of burn 
fire related uh, issues a huge portion of human body is burned so i would like you to please go through this particular audio This is how it actually works. Here's a scanner going through, scanning the wound. Once it's scanned, it sends information, and it layers the, the correct layers of cells where they need to be. And now you're going to see here a, a demo of this, this actually being done uh, in, in the. In basically, like, like the flat layers of cells where they've done. So here you see that actually a gel is being placed with the help of a 3D printer which actually serves the purpose of a human skin. We're also working on more sophisticated printers because in reality our biggest challenge are the solid organs. I don't know if you realize this but 90% of the patients in the transplant list are actually waiting for a kidney. Patients are dying every day because we don't have enough of those organs to go around. So this is more challenging. Large organ, vascular, a lot of blood vessel supply, a lot of cells present. So the strategy here is this is actually a CT scan, an x-ray. And we go layer by layer using computerized multimetric imaging analysis and 3D reconstruction to get right down to those patients' own kidneys. We then are able to actually image those do 360 degree rotation to actually analyze the kidney in its full uh, volumetric uh, characteristics. And we then are able to actually take this information and then scan this in a printing computerized form. So we go layer by so I'll move fast from this point onwards. So by the time some lecture is happening, there comes the printed kidney. So the point is that, so the point to be noted here is that we are, uh, the mankind is in the process of printing the human part and these parts are being tried and tested on animals. So, but this particular technique of laying gels onto the wounds is a successful one and it is implemented. Likewise, heart wall. Cornell University also developed recently uh, the walls for the heart and they are under trials on sheep. Likewise, they are, they are bioprinting the blood vessels as well. So if someday blood vessels and the part of blood streams are being developed, so the things would be much, much easier for the medical industry because uh, they are, they'll be in a position to print the tissues and the uh, artificial blood, you can say. Likewise, liver is another major problem across the globe and 3D printed liver cells have been uh, tried and they are living for 40 days. It's a, it's a bit old story now, I should say. But still, we are not in a position to completely print that it can survive forever. But the parts like liver, heart, kidney, they are being tried, tested and the things are moving in the right direction in the, on the, uh, these uh, replacement replacing the or transforming the human body parts with the help of these uh, printed ones so what are our in and out kind of a things what we can look for the extreme cases in uh, 2013 an accidental case who lost 75 percent of the skull was replaced by a 3d printed plastic part likewise one of the student, he thought of this thing at the Victoria University in New Zealand that after losing his hands, what could be done? Instead of having that tedious plaster kind of a thing, he decided to go for an easy solution. So I, I would like to show you with the help of a small video. Basically, like, like a flat desk scanner. That's Sorry. what they say. Robots can give how strong street needs to be printed. 
still under development now, the go this is one of the, the of two years of research conducted with wheelchair users and medical professionals chief among the concerns raised with existing chairs was limited size variation and a drab clinical appearance using state of the art technology layer has overcome both points by designing the go chair to be both stylish and customizable with an accompanying app users can enter their specific biometric measurements and information for the perfect fitting chair Customers will be able to choose from various pattern designs, colors, and other options. So here we see that a new product has come up because of 3D printing. And this is the part I was discussing. The process of growing up involves thrills, chills, and occasionally spills. But anyone who's had a broken bone knows that those plaster or fiberglass casts are really uncomfortable. And if you've got an itch, forget it. Now through 3D printing, better solutions are available. This is the Cortex concept, a custom 3D printed exoskeleton cast from New Zealand's Jake Evil. This thin, breathable, lightweight cast, made in snap fitting pieces, would be much more comfortable than plaster casts. Winner of several awards, Evil's Cortex could be mass produced in the future. Mexican company Metaprint has also designed an exoskeletal product called Novacast, a 3D printed plastic or fiberglass latisse style cast similar to the Cortex, 10 times lighter than a traditional cast. Having a broken arm wouldn't be such a heavy experience. The 3D print specialists at Fathom have developed a concept called the Hashcast. Using a mobile app, users could gather get well messages from their favorite social network and have them 3D printed as the actual cast structure itself. A custom fit design is then 3D printed and sent to a medical facility for fitting. While Fathom says that it technically could and might be willing to make the hash cast for someone, they're not actually playing. So this is how these technologies could be worked to us. I won't go into much details of this particular thing. Uh, that's a separate part of story. And uh, PNDOs primarily deal with the amputation or the distortion part of it. So this is how, uh, in this particular case, a normal 3D printer will do the job very, very well. Likewise, in case of bone, at this uh, Washington State University, that this uh, a team headed by Professor Dr. Bose, they are trying to have a system which is capable of permitting the growth of natural bone inside a 3D printed part. Basically, they are giving this bone scaffold with the capabilities that the natural bone can grow inside my 3D printed part. And one day they will be integral part of the human body. So titanium could be there and the rest of the stuff either should get dissolved or it should permit the growth of the, the natural human body uh, bone in this particular case. In front of low cost prosthetic parts, even uh, we have developed uh, one of the solution which we'll cover in the later slide. So researchers at Toronto University, they have developed a scheme for this. Okay, I'll, I'll take a very small section of it. So they design uh, artificial limb part of it. So here you can see that whatever type of EEG, EMG sensor is being placed and an artificial limb can be provided to the human. Now the problem with this particular scenario is that the age of this particular boy is let's say less than 10. He is bound to grow for another 10-12 years. So the dimensions of the body will keep on changing. Every time looking for a new hand as per the dimensions of the left hand, which is a, a nature's given and this artificial hand given by the doctors, the cost of replacing the entire structure could be very, very high. So what they have come up with, uh, with uh, in the name of solution is that, that they have designed a universal electronics and they will keep on changing only the 3D printed plastic part of it so that he, this child can live happily. So the things can move in his life faster. So make, I mean, they call it as not impossible labs. So the agenda is that we can come up with the solutions 
which are low in cost they serve the purpose very well and uh, this is which mostly relates to all the pno professionals only that what are the various options available in the market <coughs> So these are the various designs the problem with these designs in indian context is that the costs are too high so we probably cannot afford these kind of stuff owing to their cost but 3d printing or rapid prototyping solutions are supporting us in designing these kind of solution so that is something which is very critical for mankind Uh, these are the various designs available of the shelf and all of them are 3d printed only and you can find numerous on internet now this particular example i would like to take wherein in uh, 2017 uh, a school teacher uh, from indore in india only she was suffering from tuberculosis and that tb somehow entered the spinal cord and 10 of the vertebrae were lost they basically lost the strength so uh, the problem was that she was not able to or the spinal cord was not able to carry the load of head if the patient tries to sit without any support the weight of head is sufficient to break the backbone at the location of neck so the surgeons in india only with the help of team from australia if i am not wrong they replace this this damaged section and these screw kind of a thing what you are looking so at this top section of it at these two locations the skull was supported and this entire structure was designed within a few 3 weeks or so in a very short span of time this entire piece is the printed titanium part and it sticks to the spinal cord if this operation could not have been completed on time then the spinal cord was bound to fracture i mean the the breakage was bound to occur because already she was losing the control over the different body parts arms and I mean legs they were out of control so here we observe one of the best possible case where in titanium has saved the life of a a person now the key two three things to be taken from this particular slide is that number one doctors are inevitable yes we agree for human life in this particular case the engineers were important in terms of designing that what is the weight of the human head and how we are going to transfer this weight directly to the backbone where the bones are still capable of carrying the load now conveying the medical information to directly to engineer is a difficult task so we need a intermediate person as well who can successfully transmit this knowledge to the engineers so ultimately we are looking for a group of members which comprises both the doctors as well as engineers because this is a engineering problem that how we are going to transfer the load because at the age of 28 if this lady is being treated we assume at least 30 40 years of life to go ahead so you cannot say that okay there will be difficulty in moving your neck that is not that that won't be acceptable phenomena so we observe here that there is a, a strong need of having the groups which comprises both the technical experts from the engineering domain of sciences and medical experts from the medical field then only these kind of researches are possible and that is what we have seen in most of the uh, these examples what we have seen in the previous slides so the typical material uses for your purposes these could be bioceramics biodegradable polymers or titanium the most important uh, in india we have a couple of titanium printers the uh, only one known to me is in bangalore i heard someone in delhi as well now but i am not sure and the cost of printing is extremely high but the advantage is that this titanium printed part can be a, uh, kept inside a human body forever other than that we can think of tools to improve patient understanding to facilitate diagnostic quality 
to perform pre surgical planning normally doctors what they do is that they plan the entire surgery if you are given the 3d printed body or parts of you can completely perform the experiment in the in the name of uh, surgery so that surgery entire surgery can be done beforehand or the therapy is planning whatever kind of therapy it is implant and tissue designing so customized prosthesis are possible bone implant for patient outside of normal ranges we can improve the surgical outcomes by individual fitting or we can repair a variety of skull defects as well if we consider all these applications as the advantages of rapid prototyping then what are the disadvantages these plastic models are often delicate to handle the printers are limited by the dimensions if you are looking for a large dimension so is the cost of the printer model detail will depend on the slicing data that is the cad data so we have to have we may have to compromise at some points key limitations of rp yes cost will always i'll always look for a titanium implant but i can't afford to have because the machine itself is a huge cost then the raw material being consumed the accuracy we are looking for and what we can attain out of a, a given machine what we are having the surface finish or the finish of the part the strength we are looking for and the material option because in all the biomedical application we have seen that tissues are being developed but they have a very limited life video 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 to video to yes voice is not clear sir your voice is not clear hello uh himan sir yeah am i audible now sir now now it's audible okay sir okay 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 uh, we were discussing a low cost automation solution wherein with the help of a pno expert we have designed a artificial limb for the citizens of a nation like india a developing country where we cannot afford very high cost solutions so we know i mean first we should know what are the various available options so alimco indian government company is a very cheap option second we have international brands like autobox so they start somewhere around 2.5 lakh then 5 lakh 10 lakh depending on application so this was the one which we were having for researches this this is from autobox germany and this is the one which we experimented with there are hundreds of chinese products none of them are, can be i mean you you cannot guarantee or reliability factor is missing but the cost are really really very low compared to the features they recommend and the world's best till date is ilims so we have, we have seen in one of the video the iling products but they are very costly and indians won't be in a position to go for them so now we see the scenario at one end we have what is close to perfect not equal to nature but still man made perfect but for indians this cost is not acceptable 
at other end we have what is acceptable to indians but it's a piece of wood or it's a piece of solid plastic only a heavy weight which has got no feature no sensor it cannot support you at any level but the cost is acceptable in between we have but in between these costs are still quite high so we came up with a three fingered and five fingered solution wherein we have we have kept the system externally battery powered using a microcontroller servo the entire scheme we designed and uh, the key thing was that it it should be a carbon fiber made structure in future and waterproof structure so that we can go to these 6 lakh upper amputees issues and we can take care of them at a relatively much much lower cost so these this is how we designed the solution we made a first a cad mod of the, of the part in automation in electronic segment we designed our own sensors instead of using what uh, this uh, autobox is using as eeg or emg sensors we designed our own low cost sensor we designed our signal conditional amplifier controller now this entire segment belongs to a, a engineering kind of a section we design whatever actuators motors are required finally 3d printed a part on a three finger system we performed how the metallic thing will go so we made a metallic structure before that you see in the previous slide it's not moving back so this design we took uh, the basics from the autobox design we performed the stress analysis another part to be done in uh, engineering softwares only and then we finally designed the three fingered part and this is our five fingered system and in the now this is how my three fingered system works so these two are our uh, one is the sensor from autobox and the other one is the design one designed by us so now you see there are two sensors one is from autobox and other one is a uh, indian made and we are using a power bank there is no external connection of any of the product to control this particular object and this is our five fingered system here both the sensors are developed by us only so we have removed these auto box sensors in this case and we have uh, developed this entire artificial limb using 3d printing so we come back to what we started with we know that there is a manual process then you go for a negative cast you fill the cast you modify the cast and then you are done with the socket making thing whatever technique you follow if i have to go with the rp based technique i go for a 3d scanning we scan the data we go to a cad workstation because i'll need a doctor to apply what kind of pressure and how to change the shape of this particular socket and then i'll go to a 3d printing location and then finally we'll have a socket like this now this particular socket is a 3d printed one and you can see that it has got a continuously smooth surface the one at the right top versus the one at the right bottom you can see some kind of white lines inside so this is it's always depictable that okay this is a 3d printed part if it is made up by some abs pla kind of polymer and printed using 3d printing technique okay ultimately you make it by your uh, manual process or you use a 3d prototype one ultimately our aim lies here so you can have any one of the technique and both are equally good so uh, moving further i'll conclude this particular part but i'll discuss couple of more things we observe that majority of pndos can be uh, this processes and orthoses parts can be readily scanned and 3d printed i assume in last one hour you have seen so many applications or so many products that it it seems acceptable statement now incorporation of 3d scanned medical sensor data along with rp techniques can further enhance the functionality of pndos and medical professionals but for this this is the 
bare minimum essential requirement that there are joint efforts by doctors and engineers and 3d printing has potential of producing efficient solutions in terms of time cost and effort and i would like to continue with this what kind of applications we can look for now this is a 3d printed part but this designing belongs to a engineer and dimensions are given by a doctor a metallic part to be operated a part of skull or parts like these for human so in any case we observe that there are number of applications where doctors and engineers can work simultaneously to come to a a result a solution which can be of use like if i go by this particular thing you just what is the requirement of having plastic over here or a plaster over here that we are looking for giving a appropriate support to the human body part and we are successful in giving in that so and we can go to as good a solution as a 3d printed artificial limb or a metal printed artificial limb okay uh thanks for your kind attention i am always available at my email id uh the floor is open for your questions okay thank you dr akshay man chahan sir for delivering such a wonderful session and it uh, it is uh, Uh, knowledgeable and related to our fields only and there are some questions now uh, i would like to unmute uh, 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 jitendra kumar sir jitendra kumar dev sir uh, uh, unmute him you can ask your question sir uh, hey man sir uh, good morning good morning sir uh, sir this is jitendra from uh, himachal pradesh oh nice sir nice how are you sir <laughs> Uh, sir, my question is: I was working on at present. I'm working with a you know, 3D scanner. Okay. So I use over Arduino because I used to work with Arduino, and uh, uh -huh. I'm using Arduino uh -huh. for some other trust rehab systems. Now I'm using Arduino for the scanning using IR sensor. Now okay. we have I got a, a CSV format. I got CSV. And now from the CSV to the 3D model, uh -huh. how I will go? How should we proceed for this? Yeah, I love to check it out, sir. Which uh, scanner you are having? It's my own scanner. If you want to, uh, I can show you that. Okay, you have designed your own. That's great. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I have my own scanner. Okay, because so, all the all the participants, those who are playing uh, with the Sony Xbox, they have a three D scanner with them. Number one, number two, you can convert any camera into a three D scanner. There are softwares available for that. So I can share that. Uh, so okay. as far as this thing is concerned we look for blender software uh, there is one particular okay. yeah blender the name of the software itself is blender but i need to check what all file format it supports okay there are okay. numerous blending softwares particularly meant for supporting the 3d scan data files okay. blender is one of them which is primarily used to get a variety of forms of uh, cad data for uh, converting to stl or printing the concept is uh, this uh, we are on a project like uh, i have to measure a uh, ear mold ear that uh, that we are talking epds you know that ear protected devices ear protected devices okay so uh, that need to be measured and uh -huh. need uh, we will take a number of uh, like uh, from uh, 18 to 20 20 21 20, 20 like ages wise we will take uh, different measurements Mm-hmm. And then we will classify that one. So I'm gathering data. I'm trying to gathering data of each of the mold with respect to age group and trying to make it in a, a like matrix system. Okay. My idea. So I had taken the uh, IR sensor this way, so I can get a uh, every every uh, every uh, one of them. I'm go take data will be there, and that will going to create a three D model mm -hmm. using uh, maybe a Blender software. And then we can compare that how is this different from uh, age group of forty or age group of fifty or mm. age group of sixty, and that if it is possible, I am not sure it is possible or not. Okay, sir, so so maybe I'm you can that. you can drop a mail as well. As far as softwares are concerned, there are numerous. I don't know Blender has got this particular format or not, but mostly it has got majority of uh, permitted and it's free as well. So thank you, thank you, sir. Yeah. I try this one. I'll be able to regarding this. 
thank you uh, thank you jitender sir and anyone from participant side if uh, uh, interested can raise your hand uh, we'll go to you sir it's not there is a what is this Same, same, same. Okay. So, any other participants who are interested to uh, uh, raise any question regarding? Uh, there are a few hands raised. Is it hand raised? Participant. Sri Kumar. Okay. Hello, uh, Sri Kumar, sir. It's not there. Is there? Hello. Uh, uh, Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Uh, it was a nice presentation. Thank you for the presentation. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, After yes, joining. Okay. Uh, your voice is very weak. My voice? Yeah. Now it's better. Okay. Hello. Uh, sir, uh, one question is there uh, uh, from uh, uh, what will be the minimum average cost for establishing 3D printing lab? Minimum average cost for establishing what I had uh, uh, discussed. So uh, he had uh, raised the question. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so for an educational uh, purpose, uh, I think he want to establish uh, a, a lab. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, could you please explain uh, expected now, cost? Uh, what all stuff and what kind of life and materials we are expecting? Like okay, you, you... okay. I will. I will connect to him. Uh, unmute him. Uh, Devendra Prasad, sir, you can unmute yourself and wait. Okay. Uh, Devendra Prasad, sir, now you can ask your. Your voice is not clear, sir. My voice is not clear. Okay, just a minute. Just a minute. Better now. It's a very remote area. Now it's okay? It is okay now. Uh, no, sir, uh, Mr. Hello. Devin, we can't hear you. Your voice is not clear, sir, Devendra, sir. Sir, you can only tell me like what is the uh, no, bare minimum they, requirement. Uh, they want to uh, on uh, average budget for uh, making some hands or uh, 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 some uh, splints like that. Okay, so it's a with scanner or without scanner? With scanner. So, uh, like you can, the worst of the worst case would be, worst case would be like uh, just below one lakh. They won't be very good actually. If we want to go for an industry standard, 30 to 36 lakh is the cost of a scanner okay. only. Okay. But if you are looking that, okay, somehow scanning is done. We are not concerned about the accuracy of data. Then one lakh is good enough. Okay. okay. In between, we have something like uh, three to six lakh band. I, I guess now we have quite good scanners as well. The global best are in the range of 35 plus minus three, four lakh. Okay. Acceptable okay. ones, five plus or five plus minus five plus actually not minus. Mm -hmm. But if you are looking only for that, okay, we just need to demonstrate that yes, there is a scanner and it works. Even one lakh will do. Number one. Number two, if we look for printers, then it depends which brand and what all materials we are looking for. As I've been repeatedly telling that uh, the best thing is titanium and then we start with TLA. So the raw material cost and the printer cost, everything varies accordingly. Mm -hmm. You have to get it done on metal printers, better go to the agencies, the companies who are having them. Since we are looking for establishing our own, so couple of lakhs is the starting point, like three to five lakh, Adroitech or any international brand, you will get a, a printer 
your problem would be first define i mean make sure that what is the largest dimension you are looking for because let's say you procured a 300 mm length uh, 3d printer and then you want to print 310 or even 300 inside a 300 object is a quite difficult game so if you have to print up to 400 plus go for a 500 mm printer and uh, a moderate uh, agency kind of so first we have to decide that okay we just want to demonstrate or we are going to use the data for the final thing so uh, that would that would play a, a a key role in that okay okay thank you sir one uh, someone is asking uh, about uh, what is the material strength uh, if we print a, a splint or hand so how much load that hand will able to sustain capability of that material now it depends actually yeah one one very good question uh, i forgot to mention during the presentation normally i do these printed parts even they though they look like plastic but they are brittle materials plastics are not brittle but these particular thing they will behave like a brittle material because by the time you are laying 100 mm above layer the layer at the bottom has cooled down to room temperature okay. or a very low, relatively low temperature so it may behave like a brittle material now the future what presently we have good materials is like polyurethane based materials or carbon fiber reinforced material on the same printer we can let's say i have a adroitac uh, 5 lakh or 5.5 lakh printer sort of i can make i can go for pla as well as i can go for carbon fiber based system so my raw material cost will go high but the strength has gone uh, much much higher so it depends which raw material we are looking for and whether my printer permits the same or not my printer should permit then there is no problem okay and thank you sir someone has asked uh, regarding service provider to establish a 3d unit in uh, departments sorry i mean a service provider who uh, means establish such kind of uh, facilities so uh, you so can like uh, you give a cad file and someone should give you a printed file like that no to establish what kind of uh, uh, machines or cost you, same question i think uh, he has repeated cost okay. and, uh, and well uh, that way customer support lies with the companies like 3d companies, systems and companies. statuses uh, and companies. their printers will come starting 10 plus lakh only so uh, company wise uh, what uh, what company sir will you recommend no no it's it's uh, like we are developing nation we know that how much money we have so there is no point if we are clear that we are not going to use to that extent then there is no point like if i say that okay you go for a that 36 lakh scanner or 3 and a half crore printer and you are not going to use it to the final level then there is no point going for that that's why i asked that if you just want to demonstrate then even 1 lakh printer or 1 to 2 lakh printer is workable but the uh, the dimensions or the quality accuracy are not to the acceptance so it's better to go between 5 to 10 lakh in your case because you should get the real feel of the product as well I, i'll play one video i hope my screen is still visible very visible visible sir yeah so please have a look of this video since you have mentioned a couple of things has increasingly been used by doctors to make medical models that assist in the planning and practice of surgery here for example is a pelvic model by kevin now you see at the bot uh, this particular segment where my mouse is moving mm -hmm. just keep a note of the surface how accurate you want the surface because nature will never give this kind of irregularity Which on the surface this laser sensed in line from ct scan data over in japan a company called facetech have developed a process called biotextured modeling This uses material jetting to make 3D prints that simulate the wetness and texture of human organs. Models like this liver 3D printed by Maki Sugimoto actually feel organic to the touch and allow a surgeon to see scar tissue and cancers inside an organ. They can also be dissected to practice an operation before cutting into patient flesh. 3D printed medical models 
can also assist in the fabrication of custom prosthetics. Here, for example, is a 3D printed scan of patient Eric Moga, who lost part of his face due to cancer. This printout was created by a dental surgeon called Andrew Daywood, who used it to make a flexible mask that allows Eric to eat and drink in a normal fashion. We do printed foot shelves and customised artificial limb components. Just one pioneer is artist turned prosthetics designer Thomas Most, who has found a cutting edge medical application for his digital sculpting skills. Other medical 3D printing innovators include Arkham and the Adler Ortho Group, who since 2006 have been using electron beam melting to produce medical implants, such as this ace tabular cup. This is the top part of an artificial hip that attaches to a patient's pelvis and is custom 3D printed in titanium. As you can see, the cup has a unique porous surface structure that could not be fabricated using traditional manufacturing methods. This unique surface provides the best long-term fixation as the patient's bone actually grows into it. Other bones that have been repaired or replaced with customised metal 3D prints include this titanium jaw. Back in 2012, this was laser sintered for an elderly lady whose natural bone had been destroyed by an infection. Given that I held and photographed this replacement in October 2014, Entering the mainstream, 3D printing is rapidly facilitating digital dentistry. Strassicists, for example, have developed a range of 3D printers that can create wax up using its wax deposition modeling technology, as well as orthodontic appliances, try-ins and surgical guides using its Polyjet material jetting process. The latter produces very high resolution smooth surface prints that can be color matched to make highly realistic linear models. Other dental 3D printing pioneers include 3D Systems and Envision Tech, who make printers that assist in the production of aligners, drill guides, bridges, crowns, and temporary teeth. The latter have in some instances already been worn by patients for several years. And in January 2016, Rick Jacobs, the CEO of a company called Vertex Dental, was reported to have been fitted with the first ever permanent 3D printed dental crown. 3D printed on Envision Tech hardware, each of which will perfectly fit inside the patient's ear. According to the Harvard Business Review, in the United States it took less than 500 days for every single company that produces custom hearing aid shells to switch from traditional methods to 3D printing. Now, bioprinting will facilitate the 3D printout of organic tissue. Here. Uh, hello. Yeah. Hello. Uh, you can hear you, sir. Uh, now you see the part, sir. This particular part, uh, that's very big, actually, leave it. That smaller one, yeah. Even this part, uh, this finished product will cost more than one lakh rupee. Imagine the, I mean, the technology and the cost of this printer. This is by Stratasys, like uh, Stratasys is having these kind of products that uh, polyjet kind of technology where they can give these kind of uh, finished product. So in this particular video, we have seen a variety of finished products like this uh, dentistry and ear related stuff, electronics in case of that ear thing, it's a uh, embedded in. So everyone is using that. And likewise, in case of in case of it's a pelvic model. Yeah, we leave it here. So we were at a question and we see that the continuity of bone given by nature won't be like this. So now it is up to us that what kind of printer we are looking for and it is the quality of this print which will add to our cost. Hello. Uh, hello. Uh, did it fulfill some of your uh, uh, inquiries sir? Uh, there is no inquiry any further. Okay. Right. Okay. So, uh, any Jitender sir, Jitender Kumar. Okay. Hemant uh, sir. Yeah. Sir, you can decide again. Sir, uh, uh, like uh, we do a digital scanning 
photometric um, evaluation uh, scanning. So, uh, and we have post about the digital acquisition of data from the surface. Uh, sorry, repeat. So, can we have a course on regarding the digital acquisition of data from the surface or different kind of surfaces? Digital acquisition of data from surface. <laughs> Uh, different surfaces like uh, different areas, maybe uh, anything, maybe anatomy, or maybe geological. Like, so can we have a kind of data? So we can, yes, that uh, we can go for on CAD designing. Google, Google so, Maps is already doing that, sir. For you, Google Maps is doing that. If you are looking for human body, you are only limiting the area, otherwise. Uh, it is already being done. It is possible. Yeah, actually, uh, I'm working on AutoCAD, but I, I, I feel a number of times uh, different to use some kind of filters, where to use, how to use, and uh, what will be the response of this filter. So uh, basically, I'm not from field AutoCAD. So uh, I believe that's a, I, I, it's my request to CRC Kazikoto, also, to the director over there, ki, uh, if it's possible for uh, from a data acquisition to, to the uh, uh, CAD design of a uh, thing with including everything for the filters they are using, what a mashup is using, what the wire diagrams are using. That should be done because a number, number of people don't know about how it is being scanned to the STL file making. It is, that is a part of software. So uh, before that part, part of software and for uh, medical professionals, it could be quite a distant game. Like you, uh, I can get your uh, willingness and uh, eager to. I mean, uh, willingness to learn the technology that you have developed your own 3D scanner, uh, that the entire story is completed with that. But I think like if you are using MATLAB could be easy choice for you as of yes, now. I'm using MATLAB. Yeah. So at the first stage, uh, yeah, uh, once you are having your CAD data uh, for image processing, MATLAB is a very easy choice. But then what kind of AutoCAD leave it? you won't get any outcome out of it. What filters you are expecting from AutoCAD, I don't know. But that is a CAD interface for the user. It is not meant for the feature you are looking for. Primarily, it is not meant for that. Okay. Thanks. Thank, okay. thank you, sir. And someone has asked, is there any upcoming training on 3D printing? Oh, maybe you can plan. <laughs> so, Hope these uh, days we are stuck. It, Otherwise, uh, I had been conducting uh, workshops on that earlier. Yes, we we can conduct uh, uh, CRC can be uh, the host of such kind of programs in the yes. near future uh, with the help of expertise and experience of Dr. Hemant Chauhan sir. So whenever uh, we will plan or we plan such type of program, definitely we will intimate you all. Ah, sir. But as far as this thing is concerned, there are, uh, I assume there are a variety of service providers. So if you can, I mean, all the participants you can develop your model that, okay, this is the part I'm looking for. And then I have given you the whole scheme. So if you give a part, you will at least get a code that, okay, this is the part we can get it printed in this much time, this material, and this will be the cost of it. So uh, there are variety of companies who are doing this kind of what we call as job work. Even I can connect you with a couple of them that you just tell us if you have a CAD model, very good. If you don't just tell us what kind of product you are looking for, uh, they will send you the CAD file that, okay, if this part is what you are looking for, we'll print it and send it to you. Okay, sir. Thank you. Any question? Uh, this Moto E5 is still there, sir. How to make a part in CAD? Sir, uh, <laughs> Hello? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, sir, your question is not clear. How to make a part in CAD? How to make a part in CAD? Oh, there is a text box as well. Uh, <laughs> the way you make a, a drawing in a MS Paint or uh, the way you make a drawing in a presentation, PPT. Similarly, we have CAD softwares. So, uh, like uh, your CT and MRI, they send some kind of a raise and they develop the model. Whereas in case of uh, engineers, we have softwares like AutoCAD, SolidWorks, 
there we create the model okay and, and you have just what are all companies print 3d printed prosthetic leg and arms in india uh, well uh, it's bit tricky because in india that company will be closed within less than a year's time agar wo if someone is going to sell only prosthetic arm and leg i don't think he will he'll be able to survive much uh, at most of the locations i know even the printers for medical applications they are from some developed nation but there are 3d printing companies like i had worked with one of them only they are my students only they developed their own so we get them printed from some company the point is that we uh, you have to come as a doctor you have to come up with the solution that this is the part we are looking for and 3d printing companies will only give you the print out now uh, using carbon pla yes if you are you, if you can use uh, these high end materials your strength will go tremendously high with the same lightweight feature well there are numerous companies so i don't think i can tell any single name if you are looking for then uh, uh, the most reliable one start with adroit tech go to 3d systems and stratasys depending on your institutional budgets but 3d systems and stratasys they are global leaders so the charges are like anything but still they go quite good for indians but even then the cost are bit a problem mobility india is working on it using carbon pla uh, sorry i don't know who is mobility india but yes there are many who are working on it any any new question okay so i think okay so i think it's over now and uh, Yeah. I think if any of the question is left, I can take it up. It's compliment for it's. They are sending only compliments for you, sir. Oh, you have. Uh, oh, I am participating this event from Canada. That's really a nice one. <laughs> And uh, uh, this, uh, I mean, <laughs> this hand is continuously raised. Moto E5. He is in Canada. He is thanking you, Doctor Akshay. But his question is still not there. And. Uh, uh, Okay. Okay. So if there are no I, more questions, thanks from my end. Over to CRC. Please okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you uh, very much for delivering such a wonderful session. And now we we are at the end of the session. And uh, just I'll uh, give some vote of thanks for the uh, participants and persons who attended this uh, program. So. Uh, i express my sincere thanks to my director dr fen roshan bijli and i goes beyond words to thank dr uh, hemant chauhan sir who kindly consented to be a resource person and delivered his expert talk in this today's webinar and my special thanks to participants who made the webinar a grand success and i thank my uh, ex technical expert mr jitin too he helped a lot to conduct uh, in conducting such webinar uh, so uh, now we'll end the session and if uh, for the uh, certificate point of view one announcement i would like to do that those who has not registered and attending the program uh, please uh, go through link and uh, register yourself and provide email id so that we can send you the e certificate at your mail id okay so can we now end the meeting sir sir it was nice talking to you all people thanks a lot and i hope we have uh, like uh, sir to you might be knowing i would like to tell others that uh, i was thankful to have a friend like dr ranjit that he gave me yes, that much yes. of information unfortunately uh, he's not here he tried no, a lot that's fine before. that's fine sir but i yes. just want to thank him that yes, because yes. of him i tried to convert my automation knowledge or actually married both the automation and 3d printing to come up with these uh, solutions i hope they make some difference in your life that okay it is possible for us indians 
to come up with the 3d printed uh, electronic based artificial limbs for our populations and which are equally cost efficient so i hope so that you people move in that direction and we are always available okay sir thank you and thank you, thank you all once again and uh, we are going to end the meeting thank you once to all in the meeting thank you dr akshay bye